what's up it's Kathy and I'm back with another process video and this one is for my blog post over on the paper issues blog and <laughs> I'm just trying to move stuff out of the way because I don't want it to get covered in mist so I'm kind of trying something a little different I I know that sometimes the dilutions sprays or anybody that has white spray <laughs> fingers crossed uh, it never works the best but I'm kind of hoping for maybe it to look a little interesting when it's done. I just want a subtle background texture kind of thing on this black um, cardstock. And I'm going to go get something to dry it off with too. Because I am hoping that uh, I, I'm impatient and I want to see what it looks like. So I've, I'm off to get some paper towel so I can dry it up and uh, just because I don't want it too wet I don't want the paper to warp too much because I'm not gessoing it or anything like that and as you can see I'm, I'm there and even those white lines I'm going to mop those up a bit more <laughs> because I just really want a very subtle flower motif and I want it to look like it's disappearing into the black and I love it I love how it turned out um, so I'm really excited to get started with that one so I did something I don't normally do because I'm I don't know what you would call me an impatient or a lazy scrapbooker so I don't um, hand stitch very often uh, but I just wanted this kind of free-flowing line um, since it's my daughter um, blowing on the dandelion after they kind of die and turn into those things. I don't know what you call them after they they turn into that, but anyway. So I used, excuse me, I used embroidery floss and I did split mine. So instead of six strands, I had three strands, but then I threaded it through the needle the regular way. I know people that use six strands, they don't they, they don't thread it to make 12 strands um, but I threaded my three strands through the eye of the needle and so then they brought it right back up to the end and knotted it the way you would normally do with just regular thread so then it ended up being six strands in the end I just didn't have to worry about any about making sure everything stayed put I just did it that way and I found it easier for me than um, trying to do six strands without uh, threading it double through the the normal way. Anyway, someone showed me once how to do it the other way, but I just could not get it to work. Anywho. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so I used purple and like a turquoise and a peach. Uh, and I wanted to use colors that would match the Take Me Away collection because my idea was, I can't remember if there was, if this was the layout where I was like wanting to use up a ton of chipboard or if that was my previous layout. I don't know. I think this was the layout where I decided I was going to use up a ton of, a ton of chipboard. I have two, um, two packages of the Take Me Away Collection 6x6 chipboard because I accidentally bought two. I thought I bought something different. Um, like I think I thought I bought the stickers for it or something, but I accidentally clicked and bought two chipboard packages back when it came out. And I was like, oh, great. And then by the time I wanted to get the other pieces, there was none left. So, so there you go. Uh, so I'm trying to use it up. Um, I mean, I have the 6x6 paper pad too, and I have I had the 12 by 12 paper pad, which, you know, I still have tons of the papers and that kind of stuff, but I can kind of make those papers work with other products, but the products I'm not finding I make work as well, um, just because of the color scheme. So I'm using some of my 6 by 6 paper pad, and I was trying to pick out stuff that I like together, um, but then I realized how harsh the lines were. Uh, on my for the background when I was just cutting them so that's why they're all ripped now is I just I wanted this to be very free-flowing and stuff like that so I just I just needed it to be a little 
a little bit more, um, a little bit less harsh, I guess. Uh, I'm sticking in some other pieces of other colors because you don't see much of that diamond uh, paper once it's all once it's all done. I'm not backing the photos specifically. I'm going to leave them borderless, which is weird for me, but that's because the background's so light it doesn't need a border. And I'm going to pull out as many... I, I would have used those pretty, those other pretty florals, but I find for some reason if I used the ones that were gold and outlined in gold that I find it difficult to then use the other florals because there is no gold and it just looks weird to me uh, because one's more graphic and one's more realistic looking. So I'm only going to use the gold ones. I'll save the other florals for something a little something a little different. Uh, but I did get to use the frame, so that was good. And I'm popping the the left hand picture up on on pop dots. So I'm just going to grab a bunch of stuff, and you're going to see me play around with this. And if you remember, there was these other items that came with that collection, and they were these like mirrored uh, words. And I have them, and I don't think I've used them yet. Now some of them got mixed up and are gone because they, they fell out or, or something. Uh, but I remembered that this was part of the reason I was doing this layout this way, was to use them up. So you're going to see me kind of spell stuff out and around and that type of thing. And I do hum and haw and move them places and uh, finally settle on where I want them to go. And I use up all the hearts. In the end, I used up all that I had and uh, was actually able to throw out the, the packaging. So I love when I get to do that. Uh, and I got to condense my uh, take, take Me Away chipboard. So I also love that. I am combining the mirrored stuff with the gold. There's a lot of shiny stuff going on on this layout. And I really just wanted it to be super free flowing, if that makes sense. Um, there's not really any structure. I'm not worried about the fact that everything has a word on it uh, or a phrase. And everything does. <laughs> Besides the flowers and the hearts, every single piece uh, embellishment on this has like a phrase or something. I'm, I'm not going to worry about any of that. I'm just going to enjoy the interesting part of it. So, uh, this is Hazelwood from One Two Canoe, and I loved this little phrase that said, all good things. And I just loved how it kind of curled up around there. I thought that was just really cute. That's not the title. I'm bringing in more phrases, but I really don't care. <laughs> but I'm also bringing in that pink, um, which I really like. And I'm using up this chipboard too, which is nice because I only own like three papers from this collection. So, so why not tuck in that ampersand? I don't need an ampersand, but I liked the kind of flowy look of it. But I just love that scripty way that all good things looks. It just, I don't know, it just kind of really helped the layout for me. Uh, I'm bringing, I think, all the stars that are on that chipboard sheet too. I just thought it was really, I don't know, there's something about this layout. I can't remember what it reminds me of. But uh, I, I really like how it turned out in the end. So I'm like, okay, so I got to put my title. Um, and it was going to be Free the Fairies, but I was like, where am I going to put that? Ugh. Um, and the reason is because my daughter said that when she was blowing on those and making a wish that they were fairies and she was freeing them. So she kept grabbing flowers and her and I were freeing the fairies and letting them go. And if one landed on us, she was like, oh, the fairies are on us. And it was really cute. I don't know why she came up with that, but uh, I just thought it was really cute. So um, I'm using those gold kind of scripty uh, thickers that I don't remember where they're from. They're from last year, I think. And I have two packages of them and I don't even particularly like them. But they worked really well for this layout. Uh, I know it's kind of weird the way that fairies looks because of that eye and everything, but uh, no, it ended up working out well. Um, I like the and I grabbed the Lucky from the Hazelwood collection. It said Lucky in Love, and I just liked 
the lucky part because I can just use the love or even just in love <laughs> some other time and uh, yeah I just oh lucky fairies because they're getting released into the air to go grant wishes or or whatever <laughs> they're doing so you know there is like so many words on this on this layout but in the end it it all works together as far as I'm concerned um, it just looks really cute together so yeah I really like it um, I'm gonna put some sequins on it these are iridescent sequins and I put I take out a lot more than I, what I actually glue on I don't glue as many as you see me putting on because it just got to be like too much and I was like no that's just that's just too many because I was gonna do some white splatters too so I do remove a few as I'm going around and gluing but I don't make you watch me glue them all down I'm just gonna use Tombow and of course I start gluing them by, by putting the glue on the sequins and sticking them down and then I realized that is the stupidest way to do it because then your hands get all sticky and stuff like that so I remember to to stop doing that and put the the glue on um, on the paper and glue them down and I had this in my stash these little like purple swirls I don't know what they're from um, but they were just part of my stash and I thought they went well with the collection it was a chance to use some purple so I'm gonna top it off with some white splatters and I do kind of mess up in the right hand corner um, trying to wipe some of it away and that's where I'm gonna put my journaling so you're gonna see that in the finished picture there <laughs> so pictures are coming up thanks so much for watching see you in the next video bye